Hi, Matt Byer of Matt Byer Organizing with Organizing Your Arts and Crafts. There are essentially three types of usages for arts and crafts spaces. One, for your kids. Two, for devoted artists and craftspeople, maybe professionally. And three, for occasional artists and craftspeople. When you are clear on the space's usage, you have taken the biggest step in creating an organized creative space. For your kids, arts and crafts usually go in the playroom. Toys and crafts are both for play, so they make sense in the same space. Another common area for kids' arts and crafts is the kitchen table. It's easier to supervise here, and it's easier to clean up the messier projects. Because the kitchen table has multiple uses, it's important to have good portable solutions for the craft supplies. I like this tower of drawers on wheels. For professional and devoted artists and craftspeople, on the other hand, it's more likely that you'll want to dedicate an entire room as a creative space. The more time you invest, the more space you can invest. To maximize the productivity in your creative space, target your craft room or art studio, just as you would target your home office. In other words, be sure the backup supplies are located on the outer ring, the quick access supplies are on the first ring, and a clear work surface is reserved in a generous bullseye. As I'm always saying, a clear work surface is your number one organizing tool because it allows for processing and that applies to creative spaces as well. When you create, you are processing. And when you squander your surface on storage, the creativity stops. So an open surface keeps creativity alive. And then there's the category of usage which falls between play and devotion, which is occasional usage. I fall under the occasional usage category as a weekend illustrator. Limited time translates to limited space. About 85% of my waking hours are devoted to work, so I dedicate about 85% of my home office space to work. I spend less than 10% of my week on my illustration, so I dedicate less than 10% of my space to it. However, if anyone from the IRS happens to be watching, I use my illustration in my business, so for tax purposes, 100% of the space is devoted to my business as required. Occasional use requires occasional solutions. For example, I do watercolor painting, which leads to a lot of splashing dirty water. So each art space use requires that I tape up a sheet of plastic to protect my carpet. If, however, I was painting watercolors professionally full time, my priority would shift to a completely uncarpeted floor that was easier to clean. And finally, if you have ever felt like being organized and being creative are completely incompatible, I'm here to tell you, as a former professional illustrator and a current professional organizer, they are not. As with any truly sustainable organizing, it starts with clarifying your priorities. So think about how you are prioritizing the usage of your creative spaces. For more easy organizing tips, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.